Hey, today we're going to go through AccuSet 2. If you have any questions or anything, we're going to try and go through the most common do's and don'ts, uh, maintenance and so on and so forth that we can do. Um, if you're new to this and you're looking for tips and tricks, hopefully you'll learn something from this. We're going to go through all the most common things to set up. Uh, yeah, let's just dive right into it. So today here we have a brand new LT40 Super Hydraulic. Uh, it's going to be going to a customer here very, very shortly. I wanted to go through and do a quick overview of how to use the features and so on and so forth. Um, even if you've already been using this, sometimes I'll talk with people and they'll say, oh, I didn't even know it did that. So anyways, we're going to get right into it and start doing an overview. First thing I like to do is since we live on Vancouver Island and it rains here 700 months a year, it's just ridiculous. So when it does happen, inevitably water can get in behind this little memory that's on here. So what I like to use, I used this on my LT70 when I was running it. Um, just a wax of any sort. This one's got fancy ceramic, fancy whatever in there. Um, as I put it on, like it's the boss's brake clean, I just hog it on more specifically into these little tiny areas right along where the membrane meets. And even along here, just smear it all on there. I've already done it once, but I mean, just hog it on there. And then that just helps creep any as the sun heats and cools this thing and it may warp and distort a little bit you may get a little bit of a foggy mass the sun will usually clear it up but i always put this on all the new mills and find that it really helps us here in canada's wet coast it shines it all the way up it looks good I'm hitting the microphone it's going to sound horrible anyways so yeah i've already done that it's a good tip that's what i used to do and it worked really really well anyways so if you're not familiar with this, if you're new to this, we're going to go over a few things. So first and foremost, um, let's get into one of the cool features that this has is if you go to hit the up arrow, it gets you into your next menu. You can hit other diagnostics and then it will immediately show you your battery voltage. It also shows live charging voltage from your alternator. It can give you be a really good tip if you don't know why your battery is dying. If you want to check that, so to get the multimeter out, this will tell you everything you need to know. Also, a really cool feature, too, is that it'll show you motor current voltage. So if your hydraulics are acting up or anything else, when you operate your hydraulics and you see that the voltage is going down to like 5 or 6 or 6 or 7, you know you're having a big draw somewhere, that's going to be a good indication that your brushes could be gone or any other. That could steer you in the right direction. Same with when you're going up or down. If you see that motor voltage dropping you're extremely low, that can kind of hone you in on an area to look at. Uh, very, very happy that they included that here when they went from AccuSet to AccuSet 2. So another cool feature with this is when you're in manual mode, if you just hit the down button, it'll round up or round down to the nearest inch. So instead of trying to, you know, force around trying to stop it on a, on a particular inch for when you're cutting, just hit the down arrow. It always rounds up or rounds down. If you're above half an inch, it'll round up. And same with obviously if you're below half an inch, it'll stop. Kind of a handy feature that for whatever reason when I explain this to guys are like, oh, I didn't even know I did that. So anyways, there's that. So when you go hit the up arrow from the manual position, you have set kerf, which in the AccuSet 2, every single set that you make, you only put in the value that you desire. If you want a one inch, put one inch. You know, with simple set, you always have to allow for that kerf when you're doing it. So if you wanted a one inch board, you would have to program one and an eighth because it counts as it comes down. So for your mill, most of us on the West Coast run a inch and a half, 045 thickness blade. So the kerf, when you go to set, this should be 0 0.115. Then hit save. And then save again. Now it's permanent. Now, if you're running an 055 band, you would probably run that up about 0 0.120. Save, save again. Now, every time you auto down an exact one inch, it's going to go down your value plus an eighth of an inch. And we'll continue to do so all the way down. So as you're making your cuts, you can raise it up, bring the head back, and then auto down. It's going to go to where it was minus that value plus curve. So that's a wonderful feature to have to. Okay, let's get out of here. Uh, some of the other things that you're going to want to know is you've got auto down and auto up. Everyone says, well, what do you need auto up for? So if you can imagine your log, you've got the heart. You, I always recommend for people first starting out, and even if you don't know if you're going to get it, Run a tape across the log, mark center, mark high, mark low, four inches above, four inches below the heart if you're trying to box in an 8x8. Eight eight. And what the auto up does is allow you to budget the rest of the log out up to the top of the log. 
So if you put the blade roughly where you know your finished timber is going to be and say you've got a ton more wood up to the top, you can say, well, what else do I need? Well, I need some two bites. So we would go, one of these would be at inch and a half. We'll just leave it at one inch. So then you'd look at it and go auto up. It'll go up that value plus curve and say, oh, I can get a good one by six or two by six out of it. Go up one more and be like, okay, well, that's probably where I want to make my first cut. So you would just simply swap to auto down, make your first cut, raise the head back up, bring it back, and then it'll go down the exact opposite of what you auto up. So if you built two boards into the pattern and you started cutting it, you would just hit to auto down, go back to two values that you autoed up, and then you're going to be good to go back down to your cut base, and then you would turn. Number one thing, when you turn the log, the mill does not know that you have turned the log. So every single time you reposition the log, hit the manual button first, because if you try and turn the log and it's at a different height and you start going to lower the head a little bit, it's going to go right down whether the log is underneath the blade or not. I've done numerous repairs on mills where guys have auto downed on their log because they hit the down a little bit, they walk away, they come back and it just destroys everything. Now, if you do auto down and you happen to see it, normally if you just reach up and hit it with your hand and get it back up, it kicks it back to manual, everything's fine. Not all versions of AccuSet 2 did that. Some of them would keep going down, in which case you literally just had to turn the key off and hope for the best. So that is something to be mindful of. Every time you reposition the log before you do it, you can hit the hand or hit manual to get you back manual before you turn the log. Okay, what else are we going to do? So that's auto up and auto down. Pattern mode, should we get into that? Yep. Not quite yet. Let's go into the stored functions here that you have for presets. You've got four contained within each one, a total of 16. So you can have your auto down. I personally like to leave my number one button for my most common board size is one inch. If you hit it again, it currently is at five. So if you want it to, I usually go one inch, inch and a quarter, inch and a half, and two inch on my first button. The next one, I tend to run my most common cant sizes, two, four, six, eight, whatever you want to do. So when you want to program your own sizing, because these will come, well, this is brand new. You can see it's just all over the map. So 1A was one inch. I like that. So we'll go bring this one down to inch and a quarter. You got to be careful because when it gets going, it goes into ultrasonic speed. So that one's inch and a quarter. Next one would be inch and a half. So we'll lower this down to inch and a half. And the next one will go to two inch. Now, again, once you've got that programmed in, we'd go to manual, go to up. Oops, sorry. Let's go to manual, go up, save, save. Now, when we recall that, anything in the number one function that we've just programmed goes one inch, inch and a quarter, inch and a half, two inch. Now, that will be because we've saved it. We'll be there even when we turn the key off and turn it back on and it reflashes. That is going to be saved permanently. Now, if you were cutting something that uh, you just wanted it a little, little heavy, like the guy wants one inch boards, but you wanted to allow a little bit for planing. So you would say you would bump this up to, we'll call it one and three sixteenths. You could continue to cut with that. And then at the end of the day, when you're done, when you turn the key off, it'll go away because you didn't save it. So you can make subtle changes for the duration of the time you're cutting the log, but then you'll pick up right where you left off. So if you go to auto down, it's out one inch. So if you don't save it and save it, uh, you can make subtle changes to it and you can carry on. Now, the same thing goes for over here in our next one. I prefer to have my cant sizes, quick recall sizes over here. So we'll go, I believe this one, two inch, let's go four inch. And then the next one in here would be six inch, which is already there. This one's at 10. Let's make this eight. And the last one, we'll bring this one down to 10. Again, we'll go manual, up, save, save. So those are permanently there. And so on and so forth. For the last two, I usually leave for oddball sizing. Depending on what kind of an order you're cutting, you can just put your odd ones over there and then leave your most common ones over here. So next, beside that, we've got a button that's called pattern. Pattern is rather handy. Uh, I'll explain the do's and the don'ts of that too. So for pattern mode is normally for when you've opened up your log and you've made an opening cut, a one inch board to expose a really nice space and you're into the vertical grain portion of the log above the heart. So you would make those first cuts, take a six inch cant and I come underneath with a clamp and have it 
discharge onto the log loader, lower it out of the way, process the rest of the log. And if you've got one or two cans, you can bring them back up afterwards and you can make repetitive cuts very easily. So for example, say you've got a six inch can that's three sided, it's live edge on the top, but it's a six, six inch wide can. Position it on the mill, clamp it up. You would raise the head just slightly above the can. Make sure that you're above it. You would hit pattern, and this is showing that you will cut all one inch boards. For this, I'm gonna just bring you in a touch closer because I'm sure the angle of this is getting wonky here. And we've got glare. Lovely. Let's just get you in here a little bit closer to see. Now, this is currently set at one inch. I'll show you how to change that value in a minute. So if the blade was above the six inch cant, and you were, this is going to show you exactly what you're going to cut all the way down to the bed. So as long as you're above it and you're all on one inch, the first time you touch the head, it is going to make a very, very small adjustment. It may be a little or a lot. But where it's at now is it's going to make one inch boards plus curb all the way down. It's already mapped everything all out. So you can run it back, raise it back, drop it down and just, I mean, you could be thinking about root beer. It makes no difference. It's going to do exactly what it says on screen. Now, adversely, if you were making the next one, which I'm sure is not programmed. Yeah, so this one's all over the map. So if you want to adjust this, the first thing you do is hit the button here where it'll say drop. It'll highlight the first number. We'll make this one inch and a quarter. You can make whatever you want. Then as soon as you hit the down button, oops, sorry, my mistake. If you hit the drop button, it's going to turn them all to inch and a quarter. And then again, when you're done all of this, you would go back through and hit save and save. Now that's really handy. Like I said, when you just want to make a bunch of repetitive cuts and you don't have to try and you know what your remainder is on the bottom because it's going to do exactly as it says. And again, you have four to store in each one of the functions that are on here, much like the auto up or the auto down settings. Let's just a little bit like that. And it stores the same way, manual, up, save, save. That will now store all of this. The kind of downside to this is not a downside by Woodmiser's fault or anything else like that. But if you're doing a really, really tall cant and you're using the back stands for support as you're cutting through, uh, trees don't normally grow on flat wind-free zones. They're usually one side of it's going to have a lot of tension. So if you're making a lot of repetitive cuts and now you want to stop, lower the back stands down, get everything out of the way and then reclamp it to the bunks on the bottom so that you're just isolating the cant itself. You're going to end up sometimes when you unclamp it you'll see the can't spring up a little bit because it's simply relieving tension not always but sometimes that happens you have to be mindful of that so when you lower it you'll find that your first cut will be thin on the end thick in the middle or on size in the middle and thin on the end and by the time you get down to the bottom the last one is going to be thin in the middle and heavy on the ends um, so sometimes it just pays just to use auto down and then when you do that, that final flip then you can clamp it or if you have to make an amended cut where you just take a half inch skim or something like that where the heart would be of the cant then when you lower it back down and it's flat on the mill you can then use this and finish it all the way down another cool feature that i like to do when i was doing a lot of fencing orders is when you were doing two inch let's go back you could bring this back to the top and say you were doing two inch you would raise this to two inch and then go all the way down to the bottom and make this a four. So if you're doing an order where you needed a bunch of two by fours and four by fours, it's a bit of a cheat code and kind of adds up to the point where now you every four inch cant that you stack up, you would cut it two all the way down and you could program it to leave a four inch on the bottom. So you'll get a bunch of two by fours and get one four by four for every cant that you're processing. Again, not useful every time, but it is there, and this is the features that are designed to be used. So that's the pattern mode in a nutshell. Um, if I'm missing anything or you still have questions, leave it in the comments. I'll try and get to it again. It should be a quick explanation. But I'm trying to do this real time because, well, attention spans are short, um, my, myself included. So we'll hit manual. And again, up, save, save if you wanted to save those, which actually, why don't we just do that? So now those are permanently in there. Um, what else can we get into on this? Um, if you're installing a new unit, like if for whatever reason you're replacing this board or anything else, um, whether it was damaged or it's just not working, it's time is done and you've got a brand new one in, 
if you go up, there's a calibrate head button, which when you install this particular front panel unit, the transducer that is mounted on the mill, this long foamy rod thing, and on the very, very base of it, right here, is what's sending information back up to the cable all the way back up into here. That is calibrated with what is known as a gradient number. And that gradient number has to be entered in to this unit here. So that's where it says gradient. Now I've already done this one because this was a, a new install. So 8.9023 was what was on that gradient. You use the toggle buttons to go up and down until it matches and then again save and save. And then this will make its adjustments based on the calibration off of the transducer. That's something else to be mindful of. So let's go exit. Up. Now, there's another cool feature. Well, it's not, it is just a feature of it. It's called set it. Ah, Bluetooth microphone died right on. Okay, well, we're going to have to shoot the end of this again. I just basically rambled on about a few things. The gradient number, just so you know, when you're going to program that in, as I said, it's located on the base of the transducer itself. If you remove this bolt, remove that bolt, slide the shield up on the very, very base of that unit if you follow that cable up you'll see it but when you remove this shroud you'll see on the side there's a little white id tag that has a gradient calibration number stamped into it that's the number that you would put in for that under the gradient setting now one of the last things that we'll cover here is if you go to up calibrate head there's a set at 12. so if you notice that you're cutting six by sixes all the time and your cans are always a little bit above or a little bit below and it's consistently out all the time what you would do is put a band on, strain it up, track it in, park the mill so that blade is directly above the first fixed bed rail. And then you would measure from, you have an up tooth, a flat tooth, and then a down tooth. You would raise the head up, put a tape on that bed rail and measure to the down set tooth until it reads exactly 12 inches. So if you do that and you come back and it's like, well, my screen's only at this height, you would hit up, calibrate head, set at 12, and then if I was to press this right now, it would change the screen to read 12. Well, let's just do it, but we won't save it. And then that would now make this in direct correlation to where their blade physically is above the bed rails themselves. So adversely, if it was a hair high or hair low, no matter where it is, measure from the bottom set tooth down at the bed rail, get it at 12, and then come back here, press this at 12, and then again, hit save, and then save again. Now this is perfectly calibrated to where the blade physically is on the mill. Uh, one of the last things that I'll bring up, which is kind of cool, and this is another one that for whatever reason a lot of people don't know is if you are come on stand still if the saturation saturation of the screen is too light or too dark the way to change that is to with a key in the off position hold down the up arrow turn the key on and that'll get it into a contrast mode so you can make it darker you can make it lighter you can do whatever you want to do and then when you've got it done you can toggle it up and down until it's the setting that you like you leave it there and then when it reverts back you're back to where we left off uh, yeah so hopefully that uh, covers everything that we needed to cover uh, if you got any questions again leave it in the comments blah 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 hit the subscribe button like whatever if you do learn something from that do hit the like button so that I know that uh, these videos are reaching enough people and they're getting something from it uh, the last ones have done okay. I mean, the Woodmiser audience is pretty small, but uh, that's why I do this, is so that somebody who's looking for a specific information, hopefully I'll over talk about it and get some information passed on along and everybody wins. So thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Go get the ball. Go get the ball. Those Frankies. Good boy, Henry's. Oh, he's a good boy.